Well, hello everybody. I want us to install Visual Studio Express 2013 and get started programming in C. Microsoft tends to move things around, so every time I go looking for a new something from Microsoft, I start in Google. There's some irony there. So I'm going to look for Visual Studio 2013 and um, gosh you don't even barely have to spell it right and we can pick the Express version and it'll take us to a downloads page the first hit and there's a whole lot of choices so you have to be a little bit careful in here that you don't waste some time on um, installing software that's uh, a, a trial version instead of a free version. So the Express ones are always free. So we're going to pick 2013. And even the Visual Studio Express 2013 has a lot of different options in it. So the one that we want is for Windows Desktop. That's the one that we'll use to get started programming with um, C. And you can do this on a, a Windows 8, a Windows 7, or even a, um, a Windows XP machine. If you're still using a Windows XP machine and you're a Valencia student, you should look at the DreamSpark um, program and maybe upgrade your machine. So I'm going to click on the one that says Windows Desktop. You have two choices. You can download something to burn a, um, a DVD, or you can install it if you're on the machine that you're going to use for this. So I'm going to click Install Now. And here's another place where they say, well, why don't you try the Ultimate? And that's not a free version. That is the a version that costs more than a thousand dollars a copy and we are going to go after the Windows Desktop Express version. Okay, your download is about to start. I thought it was going to ask me to log in but now it says up here that I'm already logged in. Okay, so you will get a login page and you should use your Valencia Atlas email. Um, so see the one that's popping up here when I hover over my name. Your Atlas email address that ends with at mail.valenciacollege.edu that is actually a Microsoft account. So Microsoft gives those email addresses to the colleges and we give you one. So I had already logged in and your your password is the same password that you would use for your Atlas account. And I'm going to just say go ahead and run this. And we'll see what happens. This might take um, some time. So this pops up. It requires 4.8 gigabytes and it tells us when we're going to where we're going to put it. This might be a little bit confusing to you. Visual Studio version 12.0 but it's Express 2013. Those are the same thing. <laughs> so there's a number for this version and it's 12.0. You'll have to agree to the license terms and privacy policy and I have studied those carefully and I know that I agree to them. Joining the experience improvement plan I don't usually do that. That's that's up to you though. So let's click install and see what kind of trouble we get in. And <clears throat> so this dialogue pops up. Do you want the program to make changes to the computer? And we do. And 
so I will edit out some gaps. If it looks like mine is going very, very fast, it's because I've edited out some gaps in the video because there's no need for you to be watching nothing happening. Well, it sure is taking a long time to install the all of the things that surround the Visual Studio, including the .NET framework. Um, this is worth it, though. The Visual Studio will allow you to develop programs in Visual Basic, C, C++, C Sharp. So you will, um, you can get through several of your classes um, using just this one development environment, and it's it's widely used in industry. So it's a good idea um, for you to start out by using a professional development tool instead of um, a toy or an academic development tool. It'll be worth it. It's just taking a lot longer than I even thought it would. So we're getting there. Um, now, this reminds me that when the beginning of a semester starts, there are a lot of students going and getting this piece of software from all over the world. Students have had difficulty getting this download to work without interruption, so I'm, I, I'm thinking now that instead of install, perhaps we should have said save this file. Um, the other best advice is if you are installing this at the beginning of a semester along with everyone else in the world, try doing it late at night or early in the morning. You will have a better chance of it um, not, not being interrupted. It, it, th this is a larger install than it used to be. You used to have to get small express programs for each language and that had the advantage of being a, a faster download and install. So it tells us that the setup was successful and we have to reboot and I will come back after I've rebooted and I'll st we'll start looking at writing a C program. So after you reboot your machine you will have um, a new item on your start menu uh, and it will be Visual VS Express 2013 for desktop. And it's um, this new symbol with the very triangular looking infinity sign. Um, the old one used to look like an infinity sign and now it's kind of an angularized version of that. So the first time you run it, it will ask you, do you want to log in? Which is kind of strange. And you can say, no, not right now. So there is now in Visual Studio a way of uh, logging in and doing your work within your Microsoft account. And we don't need to complicate things. We're going to make uh, fairly small C programs. We won't have a team working on them. And once that's done, you will see the Solution Explorer on the right, and this Start page, you really don't need this. So let's close the Start page, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a very simple C program and make sure that everything is installed correctly, and we have a C program that will run. And So let's look under File, say New Project. So lots of options here. Visual Basic and Visual C Sharp. Open Visual C++ and pick Win32. And then a Win32 console application. Look down here and see where your project is going to go. You can change this if you want to. So by default it will go in your projects folder. Let's give our project a new name. Uh, I'll name my first project. Darn it. Can't type. Cannot type. Don't use any special characters in these names, in the project names, like commas or apostrophes. 
or hyphens. Okay, one more thing we have to do. Under application settings, we're going to pick empty project. So we don't want them assuming that we want to do stuff and putting a whole bunch of things that we don't understand. So we want to start off just very clean and empty project, a console application, and it will build this project for us and put it in the Solution Explorer. Okay, so we have a properties window down here. We don't really need that either. Let's close the properties window. So in um, Visual Studio, everything runs in a project. And we're not going to use very much of this. We're going to start out by using just the source files folder in the Solution Explorer. Right click on source files and pick add and then new item. And we have a few choices in here. We built a C++ project. We're going to pick C++ file. Now here's um, an important point that if you miss it will cause you all manner of grief. We're going to name our source file down here um, not with CPP but with .c. So I'm going to call it hello.c. If you don't put the .c there they will put .cpp for you and that that would be a C++ program. So that's a valid thing to do if you're in a C++ class. But we're going to write C code. C is a subset of C++. So you don't get a C compiler or a C development environment. We use a C++ development environment and then specify that we want to use it for writing C programs. So we're going to add that to the project. And now we have this edit window here on the left. And we see hello.c. So I'm going to type a C program here, a very small one. You have to get the case of the letters exact. You have to get all of the punctuation exact. The spacing is not that important, but these um, the braces and the parentheses <clears throat> Okay, so this is a C program. The mistakes that you'll make if this is your first C program ever, this is an open brace, and this is an open parentheses, and a close parentheses. That's the close brace. Everything you open you have to close. So there's an open angle bracket and a close angle bracket. A lot of times you'll get some hints by the colors if you've forgotten something. Suppose I forgot to put that close double quote. Well, you can hover over it. The error message is missing closing quote. So that's pretty clear. Also, the color um, is a visual clue for when you have not closed something that has to be open. OK, so let's assume that we have a C program that's correct. And we're going to run this. Okay, a local Windows debugger. So this triangle that points to the right, the play button, let's click on that. Now it gives an error message. This project is out of date. Do you want to build it? Well, of course it's out of date. <laughs> we have never built it before. So say, don't show me this anymore, and yes, I would like to build it. So every time you change your program, you want to rebuild it. So down here, a, w a new window pops up, the, an output window, and here is your program running.
So I'm running two monitors here and all of my windows are popping up on the other one. I have to drag them into the monitor that I'm recording. So this C program prints Hello Universe and Pause, System Pause. Press any key to continue. That's what the System Pause does. So this is the output window from your program and it's also called the console. So this is a console application which means that the user interaction is here on a console. You'll be asked to copy and paste your console, your output window, into your assignment. That's a very common thing your instructors might ask you to do. You can't do select copy and paste out of here in the usual way like you can out of most Windows applications. So look under this icon and do edit, select all, and then edit, copy. And now you can paste the content of this window into your assignment document. I'm going to hit any key. <clears throat> now, you can always copy and paste this from this window, the code editing window, so if your assignment says, if your instructor asks for your code and the output from running your code, you can copy and paste this easily. And the output from running your code, you have to use that icon in the upper left, like I showed you. Okay, so this is a little bit confusing because this window is called output. When we talk about the output window, most of the time we're talking about the window where the program is running. So this is a useful output window. This output window is going to have some error messages in, in it. Um, things that it cannot find. The PDB file. That's the program database file. And we don't have a program database file in our console programs in C. So these errors are alarming but you can ignore them. I think that's all we need to do from here. This gets you started. We have a C program that compiles and runs. Um, try again. Why don't you close this project? We can even close the whole solution. There. Now we have a, a place to start from, the, from scratch. And try it again. Rewind the video and do this two or three times. Make a console application and have it print whatever you want it to print. Make sure that that part of it becomes easy for you, getting a program started. Very good. Visual Studio Express 2013 for Windows Desktop. I hope you have a good semester.